Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another interview for the Caribbean Aquaculture Network. Today we have Ricardo Morris, and Ricardo is a fisheries biologist and marine ecologist who has worked as a fisheries manager and researcher. And Ricardo is from Jamaica, so he is going to be telling us all about his work. Welcome, Ricardo. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And hello to everyone <laughs> giving us right now. So, um, Ricardo, I'd love for you to tell us about what are you currently studying? You're a PhD student. Uh, where are you and what are you cur currently studying? Okay. I am studying in Merida, the city of Merida, Mexico. That's in the Yucatan, Yucatan Peninsula. And I am studying fisheries and aquaculture bioeconomics, which is, which is generally uh, a branch of resource economics that we apply um, not only biological uh, components or principles to, to, to resource management, but also to apply microeconomic principles as well, directly uh, to each other. So okay. In a, in a nutshell, that's what, that's my that's my research. Right, right, right. Tell tell us a little bit about your journey. How did how did you get into studying uh, my, microeconomics and um, fisheries and aquaculture? How did you get into that? Well, straight out of um, the, I did a, I did my my bachelor's at the UE, and in and right after leaving. I got a job at the fisheries division in Jamaica where I, I spent the best part of 10 years. So it, it kind of happened that way that, you know, and while I was there, I was I was put in charge of research for, for Queen Conk. And I also did work with lobster and the other species there, including aquaculture, um, a little bit with uh, oysters in the Bowden area. And, uh, and fisheries in general, fisheries research, fisheries management activity, from data collection to writing uh, to, to public to writing reports and things like that. So um, basically, all of that process, you did everything I, I was, in <laughs> yes, the and marine after, space. Uh, yes, and after I and after that um, great experience, I, I I decided I needed to. To advance myself um, on this journey in doing a PhD and actually through some connections which I made over the years working on projects and research, I, I, I contacted some colleagues that I had here in, in this part of the world and they, had, they, they were really happy to have me. So I, I thought it was a great opportunity not only to, to advance my skills as a, as a biologist, as an ecologist, but also to, as a as a person and to, right. to, to, to learn to learn a new language as well, which was always one of my goals. So uh, all around, it's a great experience and it has been a great journey so far. Are you fluent in Spanish now? Um, no, <laughs> but I, I am. I am functional, but mm -hmm. I am not. I wouldn't say I'm fluent, but I am functional. I can have conversations. I can. I, I have friends. Who don't speak a word of English, so I, I think I'm doing okay. I know how that person. feels. <laughs> it, it's it's <laughs> how's your Italian? It is I, I, after two years I can communicate, but it's a journey, right? Learning a language is a journey because at some point I think I'm doing well. And then I'd hit a roadblock when everyone's talking really fast, and I'm like, I guess I don't know anything. <laughs> yes, so. we, we have all been there. Oh my goodness. Okay. So yes, um, but it's really important to learn a language um, for us to be able to communicate with all, you know, in our sector all over the world. So I think it's yeah. great. So tell me when, before you got to UWE, is this something that you ever thought about doing? Like when you went to university, what what was on the agenda? Well, when I went to UWE, actually, I wanted to be a geographer. Really? I, yes, when I when I started out, I wanted to be a geographer, but I was I was strategic to have my in my first year to be qualified for several for several degrees for several courses, several paths mm -hmm. to, to gaining different degrees, and I wasn't so fond of the human side of, of geography. So I, I I really was really in love with the natural resource part, 
And then I realized that was really what I wanted to do. So I, so from very early, I, I decided that this was where I wanted to be. This was where I wanted to go. Right. And while at, while at the fisheries division, I, I really fell in love with, with conch research. And, and so right now, actually my PhD, my, my case study is Queen Conk and Pedroback and Queen Conk in general. And um, much more broadly, I would um, sedentary and slow moving species. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so my thesis is, is heavily focused on sedentary species and spatial analysis and, and the, the ecology, biology, and the human side, which is the, the economics. Um, right. Integrating all, all of those components into a uh, into what I would, in, in, into what is called the, the ecosystem approach to fisheries, incorporating all components um, in the management of our, of our resource. Absolutely. So what, what is the state you think of the conch in Jamaica right now? Do you have ideas? Well, up until 2018, uh, we, we were having, we, we, after that survey, which I was a part of, we were at a, a low, and many persons of with, 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 with that um, species and that industry would know that there was a moratorium for one or two years, mm -hmm. I understand. So it was at a, a, a low, a, a low in terms of the, the output and a low in terms of the biology mm -hmm. and the, the, the state of the stock. There have been signs, um, I haven't looked directly at the data, um, since since 2019, but um, I've heard and my, from my colleagues that things have improved somewhat. Okay, and great. I think that the industry was reopened, but in general there are problems, and there are problems that are not new. Mm -hmm. And but, but luckily, a lot of my research I, from this thesis I think have contributed. I hope will contribute to a better understanding some of the issues. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully find, we can together find solutions um, from a, a management point of view. Because right, of absolutely. course, the, the resource is fine by itself, but the, the, the real issue of management is the management of people, the economics. Right. Because the, that, that's what influenced the behavior. And so um, that's where I think we have been lacking. And that's, that's also one of the reasons why I chose this program because mm -hmm. I, I I think we I think this approach has the right idea for research for resource management. Mm -hmm. Many I think the in the past the approach has often been a biological analysis and you do some kind of socioeconomic or economics mm -hmm. and then you try to you know to, to link things together but not necessarily empir empirically. Okay. So this is what bioeconomics does. Bioeconomics, we link directly behavior, biological behavior, biological um, actions, or, 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 or biological, the biological aspect um, of, of with the, the economics of the economics. of the people. Exactly. What people. I, I'm glad, you ex I'm glad you explained that because it can sound very, it so can sound like a complicated term, bioeconomics, it, but it's, it's, it's not, linking yeah. the, bi the animal and the people. Yeah. Yes, because directly. If, if you are not, you're, you can work with the animal, but if it's being poached or taken, not managed well, then mm -hmm. you're back to square one again. So you need to be yes. able to link both. Yes, I, I can give you a, a very simple example. We can, we over, we have a resource, we have a, a patch of a resource um, 10 kilometers from a port and we have a patch of the same resource 20 kilometers. Economics plays a role in, in, in whether a fisher will choose patch one, which, which is 10 kilometers versus 20 kilometers. And that depends on the microeconomics. Depends okay. on, the, it could be that the patch that is further away is more economical. Mm -hmm. Maybe because of um, the price, maybe maybe the, the price of that patch of individuals 
are much the market the market will pay more because maybe right. it has a it has a better text of texture of flesh so things like that things like that don't don't come out um, explicitly in a biological analysis I see so you have to link directly the microeconomics of fisher behavior and markets mm -hmm. with the biology and the ecology of the resource. So that's a simple, very small, simplistic example, but I think you, you can get the idea. And much better, uh, as, exactly, uh, what's needed. Tool, exactly. Right, right. And, and here um, we can link, you seem to have covered um, the three different areas, marine ecology, fisheries, aquaculture, and now we can add a fourth, which is a social, socio-economic aspect of it. But tell us what you think are the differences between marine ecology, fisheries, and aquaculture? Because well, we tend are... to lump them all together. So to kind of divide them out a little bit. Um, they are, they are I, would, I would start them by saying they're separate but related. So um, in, in their own right, they are separate sciences, separate disciplines, and should be treated as such. But at the same time, so, so marine, marine, ecology, marine ecology is, it's marine. It's, it's something, it, it's, it's trying to manage a, a resource that is, that is wild. Okay. And aquaculture, by by definition, you are controlling the variables. So it's right. It's completely it's a completely different space. And there, there are different levels of controls, as you know, to agriculture, depending on the type of agriculture, the type of system that you're using. Mm -hmm. So in the in in fisheries, we we try to understand the biology and the ecology. And to more, we are more concerned with the management of how people use, use right. the resource in the context of that species and the ecology that, that, uh, that pertains to that species. But it, I think with, with ecology, it, with uh, aquaculture, excuse me, there's a, it's a different, there's a, there's a control of more components. So fishes we control, we try to control people. Right. And aquaculture, we try to control much more than the people, the in, more the input, biology, the biology, and so and and to reduce the uncertainty, the uncertainty. So a big difference with those is the is the, is the uncertainty as it relates to to each system. So each right. each is separate and very important, but um, we should also bear in mind that each can be an input to the other. Right, absolutely, and that's where really linkages. So when I when I when I say um, I'm an, an an ecologist, and I believe in the the ecosystem approach, we we have to take a, a kind of broader um, broader look and outlook at, at things, because even in a even in a, in a mariculture space, mm -hmm. what happens in a mariculture space may affect um, the fishery space. The right. wild part, and vice versa. Right. So, so, so when, so when we are considering research, we, even though we are focusing on a particular area, we must be mindful of the linkages. Everything and, and that, combined. Yes, because I, I think all of us as scientists, in some way or the other, we are we are working towards an ecosystem approach. Right. Where we are considering various. Some scientists do it more explicit than others. But in general, we try to link, to, to find linkages and to see how, how one component may affect another. At least that is, I think, is the best approach to Right, to, uh, exactly. Um, so leading up to my question, one of the things that I'm advocating for is aquaculture or aquaculture sciences to be included in STEM, which is now, you know, science, technology, engineering, and math. What, how was your science background leading up to what you're doing? And, you know, do you see where the importance of kind of thinking that it could lead into a STEM subject for other students? 
Absolutely, aquaculture. Aquaculture is the only is the only part of the of the of the global fishery sector that is growing. Uh, we have we have marine fisheries has reached its limit. Mm -hmm. We can only become more efficient in how we're using marine resources. But aquaculture is the only space that is growing. Mm -hmm. and, and and obviously, and if we are looking to the future, this this has to be incorporated directly um, into into the into the education of, of, of future scientists, so we can take advantage of those opportunities. I was privileged um, when I was doing my my first degree to to have done an aquaculture course, which I understand is not is no longer available, which is, uh, right. is a, a shame. Right. And I think part of the, the story maybe behind that is that um, it has coincided with the with the decline of aquaculture. In, in Jamaica, mm -hmm. and so I, I think, um, but I think the the potential is is still there, right? For our culture to grow, not just in Jamaica but the Caribbean. Caribbean, mm -hmm. we need to take up. We need to we need to show we need to show uh, the opportunities. Not only tilapia in a pond or in a town, but we can show we can show oysters. We can show the potential of of, um, of mariculture. Mm -hmm. I think with students, our, our, our future scientists, and, and even older scientists, we can start to to get those wheels turning, and right. so that we can find solutions and ideas that will help us to to, to rebuild aquaculture and grow it even more than it was before. Exactly. And address some of the issues that we have. So I am I am a hundred percent for. Or including um, in 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 high school as far as high schools exactly at least, at least, at least an introduction introductory level into high school in, right into high schools so, right. so, so I think that that will go a far with the changing perceptions and, and we can we can even, not only we are not only edu we are not be only educating scientists but we are educating first consumers. That's right, because now we're also talking about food consumption. Exactly. Food consumption and business people, because there are so many aspects to, you know, where aquaculture can go. It can create researchers, innovators, um, people making products, um, you know, uh, medical science. In yes. fact, you know, we I, haven't I, even I, thought that. <laughs> And there's there's so many linkages. There's so many linkages, and, and for example, when we look at the overfished areas in the marine space, one of the greatest alternatives that we have is, is aquaculture, right. both from an economic point of view, from a food security point of view, and income so, um, and creating income, yeah, which exactly. is what we need. So I think we are we are we are bearing a huge opportunity cost when we are not. Doing it. Each, 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 exactly, while we are not having our culture being directly. Um, and perhaps one of the issues that we are having is that we we need to develop more scientists. Maybe we don't have enough, or maybe we don't, we, are, we don't have enough scientists, and we don't, I think it's not, I don't know if the word is elevated or valued um, as a science. And I think that's what really needs to be advocated to understand what kind of sciences go into to studying aquaculture. It is really just not putting a fish in a pond. There is a lot more to it. There is veterinary medicine, there is understanding the nutrition, how to feed. So it all has to do with making it affordable and sustainable. So we do absolutely more research in this area. So that's, you know, this is, I'm pretty excited to have this network um, of researchers, starting with researchers and scientists, and including everyone, you know, uh, farmers, academia, NGOs, and the community. So I, I'm pretty excited yeah. to hear about your I, work. I think a great, I think a great, a great start for this network. A, a, a really great contribution that we could make is to, is to really make an effort to to publish more of our work. Yes. So 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 so. So it will start off from a 
from published work, you know, very, very technical, but then we can break these down. Absolutely. So we can, so, so we, can, we, can, we can have them, have younger persons. They're actually even environmental youth clubs. No, much more because I was, of I was, climate. I was, the president, I was the president of my community environmental youth club. And wow. These were, um, at that time, we spoke about aquaculture and we were actually planning a, an aquaculture project. We spoke with the, the member of parliament at that time and uh, I, we were unsuccessful in getting the money to do it. But these were things that we were, we were trying to advocate right? for and do and trying to get done right yes and actually one of the criticism and maybe rightly so that the member of parliament told me was that it doesn't seem like we have a full grasp or, or, or he doesn't understand fully what the benefits are so in, in other words what he was asking me was to show him a bioeconomic analysis from this and as scientists mind. and as yeah, scientists exactly. to break it down, um, I think we also have uh, as scientists. I think there is this issue of communication. Um, yes, we can publish the papers. We do need to publish the papers, but like you said, we need to now take that scientific. We need the scientific information. We need more scientists first, and then we now need to break that information down to make it relatable and understandable and communicate to lay people the importance because I really don't think they understand the importance of aquaculture, you know? So like you said, having the data now is going to provide that information of the importance. And then just to keep reiterating and try to bring it to younger people and action. Yeah. Well, and I think what, what is not being, a key part that is not being communicated as well. And I think, of course, I'm a little bit biased because I'm, I'm doing bioeconomics. Right. And, and which I think bioeconomics would pull out would, would be, in many cases, our culture is a viable thing to do. It, it depends. But we need to show, we, we need to show, we need to show how that. We need to show, exactly. And, yeah. and that's what, and that's what, and that's what I, I am, that's the idea I have when I say we need to publish more so we can put the information out there. We, we can, we can, we can systematically show how, and within the group, within the, the scientific group, many of us have this knowledge already, but we, and we, we know generally, and people in the industry know generally that things, it can be viable, but we need to, we need to inspire the next generation. Others, to right. Inspire. And to share first. the information, we need to be exactly. able to first share the information in such a way that, and to show it can be done. Exactly. So I, I think that is a key part of it because aquaculture is driven largely by the private sector. Right. The private right. sector. Who uh, has and money? And anybody exactly. who wants to get into it has to be able to achieve financing. So that's another aspect of it. It's how can they get the financing and the help to get to that level? So it, we, have a, we have a big journey. <laughs> I, it, big, it, it can be done. The knowledge is there. It can be done. It's, the expertise is there. And we, we just need to put our heads together. And I think we, we just need to have a plan and we, we just try to chip away at small, small, small goals, pieces, small pieces at a time. And I'm a, I'm a big advocate for, for, for doing proper science and, and putting research out there and letting, and letting uh, people, you know, start to think of, of them, think, thinking by themselves. Right. Based on the information that we have given. That was given. Yes. Right. So, 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 they, so they start to, think in their own context, how can I make this work? How, how does this fit into my own scheme of things? So I think that's, that, that would be a great way. If, if we can start having people, uh, kids thinking like that from high school and they, right. they, they can start to, by the time they get to, to the university, they have a good idea of, of what and how aquaculture can, can add value to, to any idea, that, any business idea, any scientific idea that they might have. And it so makes think, their experience more worthwhile once you exactly. have that. So tell me, um, 
what is it that you enjoy most about your work? Oh, that's uh, well, because you I seem very. I can see that you love what you're doing. What what is it that you love? <laughs> the best part, honestly, the best part of my work, the best part of my work, is to 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 finally have a full manuscript after a long journey of research. That is the most satisfying feeling I can have. From the idea, from the conceptualize, I love the process of science. Mm -hmm. From conceptualizing the idea to, to, to the data collection, to the, to the analysis and the final reporting mm -hmm. and putting everything into a context. I, right. get, I get a very high level of satisfaction um, from, from having a manuscript in my hand, a completed manuscript that represents that entire process. Right. And it, it, it's, for me, it's, it feels like, you know, my legacy. It feels it is. like, it is it your like legacy. something, yes, an idea that you, you started from, from scratch and this is the, the output and others can read it and, be, and build on it, get other ideas and it can support um, the advancement of science. So that's a very satisfying feeling for me. So that is the best. And of course, there are, there are smaller things like, you know, being out in the field, um, you know, doing the analysis, solving problems, just the whole process of the scientific um, approach. Process. I really enjoy, a process I, I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. But more satisfying is to have that final product, which, mm -hmm. which, which is, can be an article, a report, or, you know, something. I mean, many wrong. things, right. You yes. can make many things out of it. Exactly. So, um, do you have any greatest achievements so far? Any yet? I, I'm, well, I, I'm still what I still consider myself a young scientist. So I think the best is yet to come. Um, but this this PhD journey so far, I think has been has been my my high, the highlight. Um, each each time and each work I do, I I, I realize something about myself. Mm -hmm. I realize and I, I'm. I'm each, each part of this process where I try to put my work in the context, in, this, in, the, in the whole scientific scheme of things, um, it really shows me something different. And I, I really enjoy that. And um, I think this whole process in general, no one part in particular, but this whole- Right, just the whole of being, process of yes, doing the PhD. It, it is truly a process. <laughs> what are you speaking of which what are your challenges do you think so far um which, well as you can imagine and as a, you can probably attest there are a lot of challenges in a phd program um specifically to my work just um data data and sometimes you you know you meet uh, a certain hurdle analytically maybe where you have no idea how you're going to solve this problem, mm -hmm. and, you know. But but the, for me, these are these are challenges, but not problems. Right, I, they're just challenges. Yeah, that they're you challenges. Can figure out, right? Yes. So I, I actually I enjoy that. I enjoy that problem solving. Um, I think that is the part that builds you. Right, so, um, and that's about being a scientist. Yes, exactly. You solving know? problems. That's what solving I'm problems, exactly. Yeah. You know. So I, I think that I think personally the communicate communicating to, to persons with different backgrounds, I would say is my is my greatest challenge. And I think it's a challenge for many scientists. I think so too. I, I was about to say that that it's the communication. You can be in a lab yeah. and you could be doing all of this work in the lab, but if yeah. you're not able to communicate it to it's, exactly. um, it just stays in the lab. And I think that's one of the things that I'm really looking forward to is getting all of our young scientists to start communicating their work and talking yeah, about very, what you're doing. It's very important because if we, if we think of, if we, we, we are some of my best professors and the brightest professors that I've met, one of their skills is to make very complicated things seem very simple. And if we even think about that, uh, that, Einstein formula, E equal MC yes, squared. Yes, right. The beauty of that, the beauty of that was not the formula. 
the beauty was it's a concept so it's a concept yeah, everybody so can so, understand everybody can repeat it to the yeah, point he, where it's he, you know? he, yeah he broke that down in a very a very very complicated um issue into a very simple formula formula and i think that's the challenge for all of us and i think i think that has been the challenge for me so far mm. in, in is to communicate because I've, I've participated in, in several seminars and symposiums, and um, a symposia, and I, I that has been my my challenge so far. But I'm getting better at it. Absolutely, I, I think the more that we talk, the more that we have these kinds of um, using social media. I think is fabulous. I really like it for its purpose. Um, just coming on and having a ten minute chat on. Instagram live or you know just having a panel discussion the more that you talk about it I think the easier it becomes and you, you realize what people understand from what people don't understand and how to break it down so that people can get the idea across I think that's right but you're doing a fabulous it's job right? I really <laughs> enjoy what you're doing I'm learning so much from you All right. so so what advice do you think the next generation needs into um, starting a career in fish? Well, I'm, I'm focusing mostly on aquaculture. So if we have them starting a career in aquaculture, what kind of advice do you think that they need? Because right now, if you were to go into aquaculture in Jamaica, you know, what are the opportunities? Are we here to create those opportunities? What do you think? As a as a, as a young scientist or a mm -hmm. young business person? Any oh, part. <laughs> but again, you know, we've not talked about aquaculture is many. So aquaculture, you can go into academia. Aquaculture, mm -hmm. you can go into an entrepreneur as a business person, you know, farming. What do you think you can per talk about from any perspective? Okay. I think from a, from a, from a scientific point of view, I, 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 I'm not a business person, so I was, I was not so there, but... I think from our, our culture is a very exciting field. And as I mentioned earlier, it is, it is a growing, very important field globally. And there are opportunities. There are opportunities for, just because you are, you, you chose aquaculture, you are almost automatically eligible for several scholarships and opportunities. Oh, wow. The opportunities. That's great for, to know. The opportunities. Yeah, because when, when I was when I started to, to search around for for, for PhD opportunities, mm -hmm. especially if you're from a developing country, mm -hmm. opportu opportunities are a plenty. So, so oh, that's, that's one that's, that's one great incentive. to know. That's one incentive to, to, mm -hmm. to study aquaculture and natural sciences in general if you're from mm -hmm. a developing country. So that's a, that that is a one incentive. And I think the other is is to is that there's there's a big gap there's a big hole for research in aquaculture and if you are contributing if if you are contributing to to filling that gap you can make a big impact and and it will really advance your career if you if and whatever work you make if you make a published article it it's almost certainly going to have a, a huge impact but i can imagine if you have a if someone would write a holistic uh, article on aquaculture in Jamaica right now today, that would be cited. That would be How cited many times? Heavily. Yes, that would, that would be cited heavily. Why? Because right. at the moment we have we have a big, huge gap of, of published material. We don't have enough published material in aquaculture. Okay. And so it's it's an exciting field. From, from, a, from a scientific point of view, and it's so interesting, you, you have various systems of aquaculture. You have mm -hmm. small scale, you have um, various levels of, of mechaniz mechanization, mm -hmm. and there's, there's, there's mariculture, there are several species that even, even I have a colleague here who is working on um, red tail snapper. Okay. Who, who not many persons in Jamaica, I would imagine, or in the Caribbean, knows how to farm red tail snapper. I even knew that you could farm red tail snapper. Right, right. And, and so the opportunities are, are large and, and 
who knows? You, you right, know. it's it's open because it, it's very open. We're not doing it, so it's open. So it's, it's, it's an it's an exciting. We we're at a point where we have we have a huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as a as a, as a long scientist. I think it's a somebody who is currently in school right now, and like I said, we don't in Jamaica, but you may, around the Caribbean, there are various institutions that are teaching. I'm I'm not mm -hmm. familiar, but I'd like to learn more. But we're talking about Jamaica, where okay, you are at UA, and you are in uh, life sciences, and um, like for instance, in my case, I was studying medicine, but so many years ago, there were not many opportunities. If you don't want to do medicine, but you have studied science and you have studied so many sciences, this is an open field in which you can start to think about. You know, yes. if you're doing biochemistry or doing uh, marine zoology, if you're doing um, any kind of chemistry, you can look into this area for an opportunity. Yes, exactly. And that linkage, to state that linkage is very important as well, because even though we're talking about aquaculture and specializing in aquaculture, you can be an aquaculture economist. You can be an aquaculture, I don't know, biochemist. Absolutely. You can be an aquaculture social scientist. So, so, so this, this, is the, this is the kind of opportunity that I think um, having our culture at the high school level would help. So, so, so it says so to open the mind exactly to, to the opportunity from earlier age to the, the opportunity. Yes. So, um, we, so, we can, so, so not just not just to focus on one aspect of of our culture, but we can make linkages with other disciplines, and that op that opportunity I don't think is being taken advantage of. Right, right. Um, so, so I think. Just having our culture being um, disseminated, like uh, information being disseminated more, I think would be a very useful thing um, for, for young people in general. So that would be my, my, right. my advice. And for an for island, it. for an island, I mean, you know, I remember when I did marine zoology for the first time, I know uh, the Discovery Bay Marine Lab is doing a lot, lot more now. Um, you know, taking kids out and getting them to understand the marine environment. But you live on an island. I mean, it's so important to understand the environment in which you, this marine environment in which you live and how can we contribute to making it sustainable? You know, sea cucumber, urchin, everything, as you said, can be linked to aquaculture and aquaculture science. So um, I'm pretty excited to start sharing this information. <laughs> So I'm glad, I'm glad you said that it's open because it always seems so negative, but I'm really glad that you have said that it's, it's an exciting time. It is I'm an exciting really happy time. you said that. Yeah. It, yeah. It is, and, and the opportunities are great. And so I, and I, 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 I hope in the future to contribute more research. You have to, to you have to, you're, you're our next Actually, generation as, as scientist. I, as soon as I finish this my this PhD, my next project will be to to, to publish a, an an aquaculture paper, the, which which is which are aquaculture bioeconomic analysis. So right. we can we can look empirically at, at best times of harvest as it relates to 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 the to the revenue that can be gained from the from the resource. So these are things that I think it is it is known. Are generally known, but I think the empirical analysis, bioeconomic analysis, has not been done, which I think uh, would be I mean, maybe I, 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 I hope to collaborate with, of course, some of the my colleagues in this in this group, this network, and I, I think it's, it'd be a great contribution. And that and that was well, the question that I was going to lead to: <laughs> is what is your ultimate ambition in the sector? What's your vision? My my vision, well, I, I think I've, I've been, I think those who have been listening very carefully, you know, I, I, I hope to, I hope to advance, especially the research aspect, because I think that we, that can drive, that, that can be my, I think that can be my own best contribution. 
-hmm. and I, I think I can support other other persons with other specialties by by contributing more research. So 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 my goal is to advance the body and the quality the quality and the body of work that is being published as it relates to agriculture specifically in the in the context of of small of the of Jamaica and the Caribbean. Okay. So so but that's that's all all I think the, the decisions that need to be made should and can be supported by good research. Absolutely. So, 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 so and to, that's, to that's really look at uh Science, science and proper research and proper writing, communicating of the scientific exactly. data. Yeah. Uh, so and 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 so because if we're if we're going to talk about I don't know adding other aquaculture species, we must have the, the the information, the data, the research to to support that. We know it Absolutely. can happen, but yeah. we need to show that and we need to present that. And we, when it will support us in, gain, in gaining funding, in gaining public support, in mm -hmm. answering questions. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we are not just, we're not just going to have word of mouth. Uh, because right, I we need the next this. stage now. Exactly. Yes, yeah. the action it's, level. It's not aspect. enough for us to say, we, we have been doing this for five, 10 years. So I know I am right. No, that's not science. Yeah. We need to do the work. And things have changed. The environment has changed uh, with climate change. Exactly. You know, all of these things have changed and we need to keep it updated. So, um, so I'm really, really excited about your vision, uh, your vision for um, elevating aquaculture in Jamaica and the Caribbean and working, us working together um, to make it the next phase, the next actionable mm -hmm. phase. I'm so excited about that. Me too. I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> so it was it was really a pleasure talking with you. And I really hope to see you again to doing more, maybe some smaller chats, some question and answer to get people talking more about aquaculture and uh, bioeconomics. Um, sure, that's really, I mean, it, really important aspect of it all. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. And of course, I, I, will, I will be... It will be a pleasure for me to, to assist any way I can. I think this, uh, we, have a, we have a lot of work that I think we can achieve. Absolutely. Together. Absolutely. So it was a pleasure talking with you and um, I'll see you soon. Thank you and take care. <laughs>